All right, so the Sony ZV-1, I'm, I don't have it, obviously. I'm just going to be sharing my opinion and if I'm going to be getting the camera and maybe why you should and maybe why you may not want to get that camera and save up on something different or save some money and jump into the Sony ZV-E10. So the Sony ZV-E1, at first glance, is an amazing camera. It is a full frame camera by Sony, which has the same sensor as its popular A7S III and the Sony FX3 in the Cinema Line lineup. So what does that mean? Well, full frame is going to be a larger sensor. You're going to be able to utilize the full frame lenses and it is going to be a low light beast. Here's some caveats though is that the Sony ZV-E1 is marketed for vloggers. So here's my opinion on vlogging. I don't vlog myself, so again, this is a personal opinion. And I think you would want something that is lightweight, easy to carry, that has great auto focus, has great auto white balance, exposure, is because you want to be taking out this camera at any given time and pop it open, ensure that you have a nice screen and that you can have a few places where you can mount maybe an external mic, maybe not an external monitor and also lightweight that you can put this on a gimbal and travel with. The Sony ZV-E1 is a, I want to say the big brother to the Sony ZV-E10. The big thing about the Sony ZV-E1 versus the A7S 3 and the Sony FX3, it is the same sensor and it is much cheaper, which really makes this really tempting to get. And I think as a vlogging camera, it is going to be a great camera to have. You can utilize this camera to create really stunning and great video. It will have that 12 megapixel, so it will be able to take some stills, but not amazing stills for professional work. And that's the caveat for me. When it comes to professional work, there's a few things that the Sony ZV-E1 is missing. And again, it's my opinion, the Sony ZV-E1 is marketed as a vlogging camera. I'm not a vlogger, again, going to say that outright, I'm not a vlogger yet, or at least at the time of this recording. So, for me, right now, it's not a camera that I'm willing to get. Because if I'm going to be getting a camera that is full frame, has an amazing sensor that is in the A7S III and the FX3, for me personally, I'd want to use that camera for professional work. And for professional work, there's a few things that the Sony ZV-E1 is missing for me. One is when I'm filming in 4K is going to be that possible problem of overheating. Because the Sony ZV-1 won't have a fan like in the FX3. There is going to be another missing thing for professional work where it doesn't have the dual SD card slots. And for me, that's going to be really important, especially for backup for footage. Never know when an SD card, actually, an SD card will fail. It's just when. And having that backup, especially for special moments or, again, professional work, you want to have that dual card slot. Secondary to that with the Sony ZV-1, because it is marketed as a vlogging camera, it's also priced a little high. I don't know the price offhand. I do know it is significantly more than a Sony ZV-10, and I think it's even higher than the Sony FX30. So because I don't have the price in my head right now, I'll post what the price of the Sony ZV-E1 is being priced for right now. So as a vlogging camera, something that is easy to carry, it is going to be small and lighter 
than the Sony A7S III or the Sony FX3. So that's going to be nice. However, it's not going to be as small as the Sony ZV-10. It won't be as light as the Sony ZV-10. And also, if you're going to be vlogging, the best vlogging camera is the camera that's in your pocket or with you when you want to vlog. And that might be even just your smartphone, your iPhone, or your Galaxy S series. And for me, that's what I would probably use. I've used the Sony ZV-E10 in multiple types of scenarios, not in vlogging. And for the price, I still think even in 2023, even with the launch of the Sony ZV-E1, that the Sony ZV-E10 for vlogging, I think is the better choice for most users. Again, most users. I'm not saying for everybody, because there's a couple things that you need to think about. Because there are some certain costs when you're purchasing a camera that has interchangeable lenses. And that is right, the cost of lenses. And when it comes to full frame glass versus APS-C or a crop sensor glass or lenses, it's going to be much cheaper for a APS-C lens. Give me one moment. Just to give you an example, this is a Sony 11 millimeter f1.8 APS-C lens, and this is a 85 millimeter f1.8 full frame lens. So this, obviously you can't see it, but this is really, really light. This is much heavier than this. Obviously, we're talking about an 85 millimeter lens versus a 11 millimeter lens. When you're carrying a combination of, let's say, these two lenses, this this lens and this camera, for me, if I was going to be vlogging, would be the ultimate setup. A wide angle lens like the Sony 11 millimeter f1.8 and the Sony ZV-10. They both will have the articulating screen so you can see yourself. And it will have some other features. Again, I'm not going through all the details. Showcase mode and some blurring of the background if you're using, let's say, a kit lens and anything like that. I don't use that per se. And it's going to give you a lot of different picture profiles. For me... I think it's great that you're going to be getting a Sony ZV-E1 full frame that will get you the same quality, low light capabilities as the A7S III or the FX30. And there's a few things, again, that's just missing for me. If I was going to jump into that realm and that price range, I would even save up. And if I was going to get a full frame camera as a second camera, etc., I'd probably jump to at least the A7 IV. That's still going to get me 10 bit F2, uh, sorry, 4.2.2 color, which is going to be amazing. Yes, I mean, the Sony ZV10 is 8 bit. I still think it has a great quality video for this price range. It's definitely in a very affordable price range for someone getting into vlogging. And for sure, if you want to take that step up and you you jump to the Sony ZV-E1, I think that might be for you. And it, and it might be. For me, it would probably, for me, jump to a Sony a7 IV where I'm going to get higher megapixels and be able to use for photos as well as the Sony a7 IV does have great video capabilities. Again, you're going to have to counter that out between the two because the Sony ZV-1 Sony ZV-1 will probably have some heating issues and the A7 IV depending on the situation that you're using in and how long you're shooting for will also have that issue. And for professional work if it's going to be your A cam or your A or your your main camera I honestly would probably save up for that A7S III or the FX3, me personally, FX3. So, I don't know. You tell me. What are your thoughts? 
I personally think the Sony ZV-10 is the better buy. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. If you like content like this one, you should be able to see a video over here or video over here. Thank you so much. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.